There is a need for non-antibiotic treatment of urinary tract infections, especially with antibiotic resistant being so rampant. Now, although antibiotics have been shown to be effective for urinary tract infections, they did a study that compared them with probiotics. And although the probiotics aren't quite as effective, they're just about as effective as the antibiotics and they don't have the side effects or create an antibiotic resistant infection. So tell us about this study on postmenopausal women that get frequent urinary tract infections. Yeah, that's really a, a good point, Vicki. Comparing antibiotics to probiotics is really a wonderful thing. You know, antibiotics are against life and probiotics are for life. And when you take an antibiotic, it, particularly by mouth, which we usually do for urinary tract infections, the effect it has on the microflora of the gut are profound, and it wipes out these thousands of different kinds of species of microbes that we have there that live in a, in a very complex ecosystem that do a lot to maintain our wellness. So it's dangerous to upset that flora, and it's not reasonable to think that you can compare it to a forest fire and, and then throw seeds out from redwood trees and think that in a few weeks you're going to have the normal flora replaced in the forest or in the intestinal tract. So when they're looking at a study like this and they're emphasizing what they have, and by the way this was published in the Archives of Internal Medicine in May of 2012, it bothers me that they're favoring the antibiotic here because I think that's just what the medical profession tends to think of in terms of. Well, especially when a woman is getting over three urinary tract effect, uh, infections a year, that's a lot of antibiotics. Well, they give it to them the whole time, okay, as a prophylactic thing. And the one they're using has a couple of antibiotics in it, either Bactrim or Septra are the, Septra are the ones they're talking about, and they have a sulfonamide plus trimethoprim. And uh, that does a number on the intestinal uh, flora. Well, what would be some other things that a person could do besides taking an antibiotic and taking a probiotic? Of course, I, I guess you could take a probiotic with anything, with anything You can, else. but it doesn't really protect you like, you'd, like you wish it would. I mean, just because you're taking a probiotic with an antibiotic doesn't mean that the, the flora is going to be totally protected. Now, we know because we talked about this a few weeks ago that it'll prevent some of the C. diff problems that you see, the overgrowth of pathogenic bacteria that can cause serious life-threatening uh, diarrhea. Uh, but when you're, this whole topic really should be focused on more in terms of Yes, we need to get rid of the urinary tract infection, and yes, antibiotics are a last resort, but the first resource would be restoring the flora in, in the vagina, because that's where a lot of these microbes come from. Well, I was surprised to learn that estrogen could help with that, topical estrogen. Well, when you're older and you've got atrophic vaginitis uh, as a problem, that it affects what the normal flora is going to be like and uh, that's something that we have to respect. But we can use either oral probiotics to change the vaginal microflora, or we can use vaginal uh, suppositories that have probiotics in them to try and keep that microflora normal. And that will protect against bladder infections. But the question you ask is, what else can you do? So there are things like cranberry juice. Everybody knows about that as long as it's not the sweetened drink and you're taking the cranberry itself or cranberry extract. What about vitamin C? Another great choice because it has powerful antimicrobial activity against all kinds of microbes. And the same thing with D-mannose, which is actually the active ingredient that's in cranberries. It comes in a powder. You can take a, a teaspoon of it two or three times a day and it can do a lot to sustain normal flora so you don't and not do much to kill the normal back the normal bacteria that you want there i think also um sski drops a saturated solution of potassium iodide uh -huh. can People be can used drink that i think that's more for single urinary tract infections not so much for chronic although it would work but it's nice for people just to know that there are alternatives exactly. to antibiotics especially if you're on them all the time. Oh, for sure, because what you're going to do is you're going to create a huge change in the microflora of the gut. And keep in mind that the microflora of the gut has more metabolic activity than any organ system in the body. So a lot of people are looking at, at the stool that's in the gut as an organ system that's in a complex relationship with the external world and with our internal metabolism. So when we look at 
this article that was portrayed to show that maybe the sulfa and trimethamine drugs are superior slightly, and they weren't that much, by the way. And in the study, they looked at 252 women who had recurrent urinary tract infections, and the probiotics reduced them from 6.8 per year to 3.3. And those that were on the Bactrim receptor, it reduced from 7 to 2.9. So you're looking at 0.4 infections per year that's different. I'd forego that and and take the advantage of keeping things natural. And, and, and probiotics are good to take anyway. Exactly. So uh, do it the natural, safe way. Stay away from the uh, uh, approaches that are aggressive and can be dangerous. And chances are you won't have those problems like the yeast overgrowth and the C. diff overgrowth and all these uh, microbes that can cause dangerous things uh, to our health. <laughs> 